Um, hello, my name is Herman Lukov. I'm working for JP Morgan. I'm super happy to he be here. And uh, before I forget it, if, if anything I want to get across today is really saying thank you for the community. Your work is so useful for us in so many and sometimes really unexpected ways. And that's really the, the main topic uh, for my talk. Um, so this talk is not so much about technical wizardry, it's really a perspective from an application team, really at the end of the Envoy food chain. And um, I want to talk about a few uh, application patterns where Envoy really is, is very, very helpful for us to do our job. Um, since I'm working in the financial industry, uh, we have a very healthy sense of paranoia when it comes to security. So security is front and center. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about how Envoy is helpful for us uh, to meet our company internal security standards. Um, but I also want to go beyond that and talk a little bit about other uh, application patterns where we utilize uh, Envoy and where it has been, yeah, again, very, very useful for us. So for us, it's really not only about, I don't know, service mesh and, and uh, the things that are in the current discussion. Um, for us, Envoy is really, really helpful in, in some more down-to-earth scenarios. Um, so if we look at our company-wide security uh, policy, one really um, very generic pattern is segmenting our service landscape into, into zones. Um, and these zones um, came into place for different reasons. Sometimes you have historic reasons. These are applications developed 10 or 15 years ago uh, on different platforms. So they are physically located in different clusters and different server farms. You have applications that have different security requirements, regulatory requirements, compliance requirements, so they are separated out. And if you have an application uh, uh, that wants to consume these services, you have to go through a certain step or sequence of steps. So if you start downstream, we have um, applications coming in, human to app, we have app to app on the right side, we have uh, requests coming in with different levels of authentication, with different levels of um, uh, authentication through different IDPs. So we have a huge uh, landscape uh, at JP Morgan with um, half dozen of IDPs, OIDC based, um, older ones, uh, legacy IDPs, and we have to deal with all these kind of requests coming with different kinds of um, um, tokens. And if we, if we start uh, downstream, we, we get a request coming into zone one. Um, the first thing we need to do is to validate this, uh, this token, and of course we can use a prox uh, Envoy here, um, but we also need to actually uh, exchange this token before we send it upstream. Um, and by going from uh, level to level, of course, we go through, through firewalls. So we have a very regulated, tightly regulated process to uh, open up uh, fire, uh, firewalls. Um, and so the, the, the really the story is if you go from zone to zone, you have to do that revalidation every time. If you start with zone zero, you have to do that token exchange. Um, and uh, yeah, so the question is really how can we do that in an efficient way? Um, this is a little bit going more into the details. Um, we see uh, coming in a request with a, with a, with a jot, uh, assuming that uh, request has been already uh, uh, authenticated. And then of course, uh, once the request hits Envoy, it goes through the filter chain. And I just point out here two different filters. The first is the jot validation filter. 
which is uh, extremely helpful for us uh, because we have all these kind of different IDPs, uh, different JOT validation uh, configurations that we have to validate. So we can handle that all uh, without code, uh, just with configuration. And then the second step is really that token exchange. And that's where we're using um, the external processing uh, filter, uh, which I think is a pretty recent addition to the filter community. Um, this filter has been really, really helpful for us. Uh, it allows us to create a, a gRPC server that communicates with the, with the Envoy core. Um, and all our token handling, token exchange logic is, is part of that um, gRPC server. So we have different scenarios. We uh, might want to create a new token um, from a different IDP, or we have like custom self-signed JOT, so it really depends on the use case. But we can really uh, include all these kind of different variations um, very, very convenient, conveniently in that gRPC server. Um, what is really great is that um, this uh, Envoy supports UDS, uh, Unix Domain Services, uh, sockets, sorry. Um, and the really, really nice thing about it, it's so simple to set up. Um, I just uh, point out here the, 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 the Golang code. It's, it's literally one line of code that you have to change going from socket to UDS. Um, and in the Envoy configuration, it is very similar. Um, and UDS is just a little bit more performant, just a little bit more secure, um, just a little bit more resource efficient. So since all our requests go through uh, Envoy, it's very, very um, helpful. Um, looking a little bit um, into this uh, gRPC server, I think if I just look at, at, at our uh, requirements at, 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 at my company. Um, I think there's actually uh, a potential to further streamline that. Um, maybe having some kind of uh, Envoy filter, um, not only for the validation, but actually for token exchange. And we, are, we have actually started to think about a way to parameterize token exchange, like making it configurable. Um, for instance, uh, defining in a configuration how um, claims from incoming jots uh, float into uh, the, the outcoming uh, jot um, or caching, etc. So it is something that we are thinking actually very uh, intensely right now to to um, yeah make that more more configurable and more generalized uh, to make it more usable for a broader audience. Um, but there are also other use cases I just briefly want to touch upon. Um, and they might look um, very simple, but they are really, really useful. So the first of all, first of, uh, that I want to mention is um, cloud migration. So we started out in a private cloud um, Kubernetes environment. Um, and we have been moving uh, our, our services incrementally from, from private cloud to, serv uh, to public cloud. And it's almost trivial, but uh, of course, having all the traffic going through, through Envoy and having, I mean, being able to configure Envoy so conveniently to go from left to the right, it's uh, been uh, tremendously helpful to manage this uh, migration, which was um, a half year effort. A um, little bit more interesting is a um, scenario where we actually uh, unexpectedly saw a lot of value in Envoy. So we got a request from our product team saying, hey, we want to create a demo system for our application, um, which, by the way, is uh, story at jpmorgan.com, our uh, one-stop uh, shop for uh, commercial real estate investors in, uh, in JP Morgan. So if you own, uh, I don't know, commercial real estate property, please uh, stop by. Um, and 
Yeah, so the demo system is actually very similar to the, to the real system, but it has certain restrictions, like a um, user get invited to it with a, with a custom job. Um, certain requests are redirected where kind of static data is, is, is provided. Uh, certain post calls, modifying calls, or writing calls are denied. And these are actually all things you can very conveniently handle just on a, on a configuration level with, with Envoy. So we ended up to be able to implement these features very, very quickly um, with minimal changes to the original application code, which was great. And then uh, the third one I want to mention is um, it's more about our own um, development life cycle. Um, so we have multiple teams working on our application. So we have more than 100 developers right now working on that, uh, on that site. Um, and we have different application teams. We have also what we call a foundation team that builds services that are used across different applications. And we're looking into ways to horizontally and also vertically separate uh, these teams in a way that they don't step onto each other's shoes. Um, and uh, what we came up with is actually an approach where each team gets its own envoy. Um, like, for instance, the application team one gets that uh, team one envoy. Um, and they can actually route their traffic to their own space, um, which is, in our case, um, a Kubernetes workspace, uh, namespace with some kind of predefined, preloaded services, pre-deployed services. And uh, the team can then uh, route these requests to different, I don't know, feature branch deployments um, and more mature versions of the foundation sp space. And similarly, team two um, has its own envoy. Um, and can do the same thing on the, on the right side. And finally, we have basically the, the main envoy, the main application envoy that really then uh, points to the um, uh, um, quality toll gate past versions of the services in the different applications teams as well as the foundation space. So that has been really, really useful for us to really separate these development efforts uh, to give every team kind of a safe space where they can experiment um, without, again, disrupting the work of, of other teams. So to conclude, um, I mean, Envoy has been really, really useful for us in, for us, sometimes really unexpected ways. Um, but there are also challenges, and let me actually talk first about the challenges. Um, and the one thing I really want to mention first and foremost is the complexity of configuration. And I guess it's, it's easily uh, underestimated in a community that is so deeply uh, uh, um, yeah, steeped into, into Envoy, but for normal application developers, it can be really, really challenging to do even simple things in an Envoy configuration. And since ev everything goes through Envoy, it's also very easy to screw up things um, very quickly and very fundamentally. So for us, it has been really a challenge to find a way to somehow regulate uh, the way how we deal with our main uh, Envoy configuration, which is by now more than 1,200 lines of YAML code. And that's by itself is already a challenge. So we thought about different ways. So right now, we are primarily looking into building a simple CLI that allows to, to execute day-to-day -day, um, commands like adding a service, removing a service, rerouting a service, really trying to avoid um, a normal developer really touching the, the, the main uh, uh, Envoy YAML file, which really becomes like a, like a, I don't know, almost like a sacred cow uh, in our development environment. So this is really the kind of main problem for us. Um, and I'm really uh, curious to see whether there's any uh, other person or any other team that has similar uh, uh, issues or proposals to, to get around it. But the benefits are really, really very, very significant and um, 
very, very helpful for us. Um, and f for us, I think it's not really about, wow, um, Envoy is amazing and um, it's, it's um, mind bending. It's really the, all the small things uh, coming together, well thought out things, whether it's the filters, whether it's the routing rules, um, the configurability, the extensibility, really the overall package makes it so valuable for us. Um, and again, for us as a, as a team in the financial services, uh, it all starts and ends with security and um, dealing with our company internal security uh, requirements. Uh, Envoy is just really priceless. Um, and we're using really a lot of uh, the filters that are available there. I mean, for us, it's first and foremost that I would say the trinity of security related filters, uh, JOT validation, um, the JOT external authentication, which we're using very, very extensively, and the external processing with our own ways to, to inject our tokens. And uh, looking at um, beyond my own team, uh, which again is an application team, more into our broader uh, company community, I think there's a huge uh, potential that is very easily overlooked to um, to uh, standardize reverse proxy um, and and security settings with with uh, proxies. Um, until recently, our our official recommendation was to use Zool or Spring Cloud implementations, and we have dozens, if not a three-digit number, of different custom implementations. So I think um, using Envoy and having that level of extensibility. Uh, where you can really put all the kind of F-specific or company-specific uh, aspects is, is a very appealing uh, pattern for us. Um, and what we would like to see moving forward is a lot of things, but I really want to uh, limit it to one point. There's a lot of uh, discussion about um, Envoy as an uh, ingress controller. And I mean, all that stuff that we do with the filters, um, we could easily put that directly into an Envoy uh, ingress controller, but only if filters are actually uh, exposed. So I don't know the current state of the discussion, uh, whether that's something um, uh, yeah, discussed as a, as a possibility. Um, I think for the, for the Istio, there is, there's a possibility with um, um, to, to actually include uh, filters, which is a little bit um, complicated, but still it's possible. So that would be something that would be very, very useful for us, so then we don't need our own Envoy uh, instance anymore, and we could actually hook directly into the uh, Envoy ingress controller. So yeah, so that's, that's uh, all I have. Uh, again, thank you so much for all your hard work. Um, it's it's uh, great for us. Um, again, it's it's not really at the forefront. I mean, Matt saying uh, is Envoy getting boring? I don't get calls and Monday morning from my CTO say, Herman, how's it going with our reverse proxy uh, strategy? It's really something much more a matter of um, sane, sustainable engineering. And I think in that way, it's been uh, great for us. Thank you very much. Yes, we looked into WebAssembly. And f yeah, so the question is about whether we have looked into WebAssembly. Um, and yes, we have been looking into WebAssembly. For us, WebAssembly is a um, little bit problematic because the languages that we're using, which is mainly Java and Golang, is not, are not that well supported. Um, particularly if you want to use libraries. So for us, the, uh, the gRPC server approach was much more accessible and, and, and usable. Yeah. You had a question? Yeah, so um, to, be, to, be, to be honest, uh, we didn't really do um, 
detailed uh, measurements. So uh, it, it, it's more like, um, I would say, common sense if you, if you can cut out that, that uh, network layer in, in the IPC, in the inter-process communication. It will be faster, but I don't, have, I don't really have numbers. What I can say, though, is that we had initially um, kind of weird problems with the, with the filter, with the ex external processing filter before using UDS. So we were running out of uh, sockets, which was strange because you have that setting where you can set the, the, um, the, the, the socket threshold. Um, and all these problems went completely away the moment we switched to UDS and we're running this, uh, this, this filter in production since, since half a year, more than half a year without any hiccup. So we're super happy with, with that. Yeah? Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, so the question is, uh, do, do we run our own control plane and how users push configurations uh, to Envoy? Uh, that's exactly the kind of challenge that we, that we have. So uh, right now, our Envoy is just a Kubernetes pod, uh, and we're running a static um, config map configuration. Um, and uh, of course, the changes to this co of these configurations go through, through Git and, and PRs. Um, but it is, it is, yeah, really the, the, the kind of weak spot, I would say, right now. And the more developers we are on board to our foundation layer, the more um, I think this problem is, 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 is growing. So this is really something where we, yeah, looking for inspiration. Uh, is it like just a big YAML yes, yes, exactly, 1,200, 1200 lines of YAML code right now. And yeah, that's, that's almost self-evident that this is not a good state. And uh, we actually expect uh, going from 100 to 200 developers in the next one or two years. Um, so it will only grow. Um, that's why we're thinking about uh, custom CLI that, that um, might abstract things out or maybe a custom CRD that allows us to abstract out and, and bring specific application semantics into that, that CRD. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's still an open wound for us, or a sore spot, definitely. Yeah? Yeah, so we, we don't do any, uh, so the question is how do we push our configurations into our runtime system? Are we doing um, uh, hot restarts or are we just pushing the configuration in, uh, I mean, in our case, we just push the, the configuration into our Kubernetes and we do a rolling update, um, but we don't use X or uh, DS or, or any of these kind of more fancy mechanisms. Yeah. Um, because we really started simple, um, I think in our team might be also a, a, um, a matter of uh, skill set and, and experience. So again, we are, we're really an application team and uh, we had some folks who yeah, had some initial interest in, in Envoy and got into it, but I would say 95% of our developers don't have any uh, knowledge or visibility for, for um, or Envoy doesn't have vi much visibility to them. So, um, yeah, we might, we might look into it, um, but uh, right now it was just, I mean, our, our primary concern was to get something up and running um, quickly and, and, yeah, implement our, our patterns. Over there? Uh, so the question is, how does uh, Envoy fit into our security posturing? Um, do we do anything with WAF um, or, or that matter? So for us, um, perimeter security is, is handled by our infrastructure. 
Um, so we we have a company uh, internal layer that that is managing all that stuff for any kind of application within JP Morgan. Um, so uh, the answer is no, we don't use NY, at least to my knowledge. Um, those guys are very secretive, so I don't actually know exactly what they're using. Um, so for us, Envoy really comes into play again when it basically hits um, our Kubernetes cluster. Yep. Again, thank you very much, uh, and it's great to be here.